unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Are you feeling it? Even me, I'm feeling it. Praise the Lord Jesus. Tonight, great things, what? Are gonna happen. Somebody saying, cannot go back the same again. In the name of Jesus. It's not possible that I can stand in the presence of Almighty God. Come on, say it. And I go back the same. It cannot happen. It will never happen. In the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 16 and verses 13. The Bible says when Jesus came to Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I the son of man am? Praise the Lord. He said, who do men say that I the son of man am? Did you hear that rendering? Did you hear how it was said? Whom do men say that I the son of man am? Praise the Lord. Now, there's a difference between if it was written as, Whom do men say I am? It is not, Whom do men say I am? It is, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Did you hear that? Did you get the difference? It did not say, Whom do men say I am? It said, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And the next verse says, and they say, some say that thou art John the Baptist, and some Elias, and some others Jeremiah, or one of them the prophet. And the Bible says, and he said unto them, whom say ye that I am? Did you hear that? Whom say ye that I am? When he turns to his disciples, he then tell them, whom say ye that I the son of man am? Come on somebody. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? And the next verse says, and Simon Peter answered and said that thou art the Christ, 
the son of the living God. And the Bible says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And the Bible says, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, upon this rock, the Bible says, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Somebody say the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible says, And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loosen on the earth, it shall be loosed in heaven. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Now, let me begin this way. When Jesus comes to his disciples, and he's asking them the fundamental question, What do men say that I, the son of man I am? He knows that to them and to whom is no revelation of the Son of God. There is no way they can understand Him as the Son of God. They firstly must see Him as the Son of Man. Praise the Lord. So when Jesus walked the surface of this earth, He was fully persuaded that every time men looked at Him, because they had not understood who He was, because He was not a revelation to men which were not born again, Because salvation had not yet come. Because the shedding of blood and remission of sins had not taken place. Like the prophecy had been given. So when he's talking about the men who are observing him then. He knows they have to see him as a son of man first. And then call him something. Are you hearing me? So they have to first call him as a son of man. Before they can have a revelation of who he is. And true to form, when he starts to ask, they tell him, ah, some say you are John the Baptist. Eh? Some say that you are Elijah or Elias. Others say you're Jeremiah, so Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. So when he would do a miracle, some people say, ah, maybe Jeremiah is back. That man, eh? that was ignorance. eh? They would look at Jesus and think Jeremiah is back. They'd look at Jesus and think Elijah is back. They look at Jesus and think that a certain prophet has reincarnated. Now he has come back again in another form. You see? And Jesus comes to his own and tells them, Okay, yes, I know what those people can say, but who do you, 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 say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Because you don't know me, you're not supposed to know me as the son of man. You're supposed to know me a certain way. Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter, the Bible says, he said that you are the Son of God. You are Christ, the Son of the living God. Did you see how it it changes? And then Jesus tells him, flesh and blood reveal this not unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And that is the foundation our Lord builds the church. He says, and on this rock shall I build the church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail on this one. The gates of hell shall not prevail on this one. This rock which I'm building. The revelation of me. To understand me as a son of God and not just a son of man. But understanding me as a son of God. To know that the portion of me becoming son of man was simply that I would bring many sons to glory. It was simply that I would become the propitiation of their sins. It was simply that I may become the ultimate sacrifice. But it was not me fully. The full me is embedded in the revelation of God. Because I'm begotten. The first begotten. Among them which are what? So Jesus Christ makes a very fundamental point to the disciples them which are listening. Because he's saying, because I'm with you every day. You're not supposed to see me as a son of man. You're supposed to see me as I am. A son of God. And Jesus says, because of this, if we are going to build a church, the church has to be established on that foundation. If the church understands revelation, he says the gates of hell shall not prevail. So why is hell prevailing over people? Why is disease prevailing over people? Why is calamity prevailing over people? Why is devastation prevailing over people? Why is distress and sorrow prevailing over, over people? 
Why is poverty prevailing over people? Why is failure prevailing over people? Because we are not building on the rock. That's why Paul warns and he says that no other foundation be laid save that which is Jesus. And if you're building with Jesus, he says, take heed how you build. It's important to know how you build. Praise the Lord Jesus. I know some of you don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to go there somewhere. I'm going to go somewhere. When Jesus tells Peter, he brings out a very strong revelation to us, you and I. He says, flesh and blood reveal this not. In other words, flesh has revelation. Blood has revelation. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I have seen people building ministry on the revelation of flesh and blood. People have built churches on the revelation of flesh and blood. People have built businesses on the revelation of flesh and blood. People have built, you know, relationships on the revelation of flesh and blood. People have built, you know, lives around the revelation of flesh and blood. And now suddenly it has crept into the church of Christ unawares. And now many men have given heed to many things that are not the revelation of Jesus Christ. They have swallowed it hook, bait, and sink. Many people are so deceived about the person of Jesus, the gospel, and the revelation of the same. And I'm going to show you something very interesting. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Now, when we talk about flesh and blood revealing something, okay? How many of you know that the Bible is very clear that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God? Put up your hands if you know that. And of course, I know that many of you who have been listening to me for a long time, you know that the word kingdom there means realm. The realm of God. The realm of divinity. The place eternal where we, we function to manifest the things on the earth as they are revealed to us in our spirit. And the Bible says, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And he says, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Oh, there is something powerful there. And I'm going to show it in a couple of minutes. He says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood. Let me show you some First Timothy chapter 1 and verses 4. First Timothy chapter 1 and verses 4. Let's begin from verse 3. He says, For this reason I besought thee, when I abided still at Ephesus, that when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest judge some, that they teach no other doctrine. And he says, Neither give, listen, heed to fables, and endless genealogies, comma, which minister questions rather than godly edification, which is after faith. And next verse says, For now the end of the commandment is charity, out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith and faith. That's the end of the commandment. Now it says, when I told you to charge people not to teach any other doctrine, because people are starting to teach the doctrines of fables, and endless genealogies. If you read the Greek word there for genealogies, it's genealogia, meaning the place where people want to trace generations to see how their generations before connect with them in the dispensation when they are supposed to be talking about the new creation in Christ Jesus. And he says, and behold, the old is past and now the new, and all things are of God. And they are preaching these things on the altars every Sunday. They're teaching you generational curses. Those are endless myths and genealogies. You're speaking genealogy, things that pertain to lineage, to generations before. Now they tell you, oh, the reason why you're not going to get married. Your grandmother didn't get married. And your great-grandmother didn't get married. And your great-great-great-grandmother didn't get married. When you deal with one grandmother, you realize there was another one. Then you deal with that one for 40 days. Then you realize there was another one. Are you hearing me? Then you deal with that one. Then you go for another 40 days and fast and pray. And then you realize that there was another one. Who did more witchcraft than the one who came before? And every weekend you're in deliverance. Deliverance. And don't get me wrong, I cast out devils. 
I cleanse lepers. I rebuke demons of men. But I've realized that the deliverances we do are for ignorant people. And yes, you can have a generational caste. And the reason why you have a generational caste is not because it has authority over you. But because of the revelation you receive. The teaching that you are taught. The foundation which you are laid. And some of you, you were deceived. And so because you are deceived, you indeed have generational curses, which you're not supposed to have, which you should not have, which you cannot have as a new creature. But because you are told that way, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. And so you cast out the devil out of somebody, and it manifests. And sometimes we see it on people. I see things following people. And I know they are not supposed to follow. But how did they bring it in their heart? They brought it in their heart when they were taught that these things can follow them. And they believed it in their heart that it is possible. And when they believed it in their heart that it is possible, they were defiled. You know, some people say, a Christian cannot be possessed by demons. I agree. But that is to the degree of the revelation of that Christian. It is the truth you know that makes you free. Not the truth that you do not know. He says, but to us there is only one God, by whom are all things, and in whom are all things, and Jesus Christ, through whom are all things. And he says, and how be it this knowledge is not in all men, for some with the conscience of the idol, up to today eat as unto the idol, and their conscience being weak, they are defiled. And when a man is defiled to think that they have a generational curse, believe me, the familiar spirit of that generation will come on him. No, we are not delivering men. We are taking men to bondage when we preach the law. So some of you, when you became born again, you were a new creature. Nothing was on you. Then you were taught and demons entered you on the altar. No, read your Bible. The Bible says in Galatians 5.1, he says, For freedom Christ has redeemed us. He says, Son, stand ye therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has Set us free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. When you became born again, you were free. For who saw the sun sets free is free indeed. And he says, stand firm in your freedom. And then for you, when you became born again, they told you, Then you said, And then because you are conscious to the idol, your conscience became weak. And when your conscience became weak, you were defiled. And that demon, which is not supposed to be in you, came in you. That familiar spirit started manifesting in your life. Because your spirit was defiled through knowledge. Are you hearing me? And that is happening every other day. Do you know how many people think that the reason why they are not married is because of what their grandmother did? Do you know how many women think that they're not going to produce because of their mother not producing? Messiah has produced two children and stopped. So even yeah. Do you know how many people are so conscious of what happened in the generations before that they think that everything that happened to my grandmother has to happen to me? If my grandmother suffered, even me, I have to suffer. Hey, you even have her name. Bamu <laughs> Bulamu. You understand what I'm saying? And so many people are conscious of that. They're not conscious of the life. Which is in Jesus. They are not conscious of the life. Which is in Jesus. They are conscious of the life. That has been passed on to them. By only their grandfathers and grandmothers. When you talk about your generation. Let me teach you something. Only pick that which is good. Go to your grandfather and see what was good. And pick that only. Whatever is ungodly. You can't and say are not my portion. If he was a praying man, yeah, yeah. Thousand generations blessing. If he wasn't a praying man, cancel that and say that's not my lineage. Because you have a lineage. According to the Bible. You're a child of the Most High. Are you hearing me? Do you understand what I'm saying? So, men now are entangling in doctrines. In the days of Paul, where they're speaking fables and endless genealogies. And these genealogies of generation of, of generation of this, and because of a generation of that, you have a generational curse of that generation. One time I told people, go in the New Testament. There is nothing called curses. You read the New Testament. There's only one word called curse. And it's the curse of men which have refused to sit under grace. That's what the Bible says. Cursed is he. 
You understand what I'm saying? Paul says if any man preaches a different gospel from which I preach, he said, let him be a curse. That is the first time we see a curse pronounced. And of course, one other testimony when the Bible says Jesus became the curse. And why did he become a curse? That when he becomes sin, we might become the righteousness of God. So he is redeemed us, Galatians 3, 9, from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. Praise the Lord. That's why Paul warns and says, if any man preaches any other gospel, save the gospel of the grace of God, let that man be a curse. And he even repeated it and said, I say it again. That if any man preaches anything, we preach not unto you. Let him be. He cursed twice. So the moment you start preaching outside grace, you have already carried a curse. Hallelujah, somebody. So men are preaching endless genealogies. And these genealogies, what are they doing? The Bible says they are ministering questions. You're always asking questions. Which demon has refused to leave? What is that thing that we did that can't go? Do you know, Banangi, there are people who have fasted and prayed and given and sown and went to prayer mountains, went to prophet apostle, evangelist teacher. They went for every kind of deliverance. They laid hands on them. They washed their legs. You understand? They flipped them. They dipped them in water, got them out. They made them walk on salt. They made them drink oil. They walked through fire. There is nothing they have not done. You have records. People talk about any ministry. Yeah, they have been there. What of Pastor so and so? Yeah, yeah. Ask him. He's my friend. What of Apostle so and so? Uh, I have his WhatsApp. What of Prophet so and so? I even know where he lives. Even, in fact, his cousin's sister is my tight. What of Teacher so and so? Yeah, we used to go there on Saturdays. What of Evangelist so and so? Uh, that one. Even when you used to go for crusades, I used to handle his Bible. You have gone through every generation of deliverance until a point where you even start smelling what you don't eat. Are you hearing me? Do you know there are people who look like they have been through deliverance services? Even their first shows. You see the first from afar and say, yeah, 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 this one. Eh? Even the way they walk, they walk tired. They think tired, they speak tired. You know, if you tell him, can you come on Thursday and pray with us? Uh, I've been everywhere. <laughs> have walked everywhere. Where haven't I been? Serious. All of those pastors, I know them. I know them inside and out. No, you don't know Apostle Grace Luvega. You don't know me. <laughs> Welcome to freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. You know our foundation in our nation. Of course, predominantly, before the gospel came, we were traditional. Traditional witchcraft. You understand what I'm saying? So our lineage is witchcraft. We became born again. And the first altars that lit the fire of our nation were not embedded in a teaching culture. Because many people transition out of witchcraft. So even in the church, even them, they are taking things back, sending them back to each other. You understand? That's... You understand what I'm saying? Every time people are testifying, then my aunt bewitched me. Then my cousin bewitched me. And it's true people are under witchcraft. But why are they under witchcraft? Are they bewitched because they are bewitchable or they are bewitched because they don't know who they are? Answer me. He says, greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. The foundation he was going to build, he says, the gates of hell will not prevail. But every time people are under, oh, then me, do you know how many people, every time they are under the deliverance, people are under, and it's okay for people who are not born again. We need people to get born again and to come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it's okay for those ones to have deliverance on a constant. 
But you've been born again for 20 years. You're ministering questions. Instead of godly edification, which is in faith. You're not edifying. Your finances are not edifying. Your body is not edifying. Your vision is not edifying. Your marriage is not edifying. Everything has failed. Every time you're conscious of who bewitched you, who didn't bewitch you. And don't get me wrong, I cast out devils every meeting. You know that. But how long are you going to be a specimen? Not for us who cast out don't have. How long will you come up thither? And enjoy the life of the spirit. Where God also uses you to set others free. For you every time you go, leave. Go. Apostle, I think my family, my apostle pray for me. I think they are sending things on me. And some people, I just put up my, I put my hand and I say, God, help her, deliver her. But in my heart, I'm like, God, I wish it adds until she understands. No, because we are building on the wrong foundation. You understand what I'm saying? And men's spirits have waxed. Yes. And because of that, they are dull of hearing. They are dull of hearing. Many people are are too dull in the things of the spirit. Everything that comes hits you. Some of you right now, eh, the devil can kill you. I know that's the scripture. He says the servant of God must not strive. But he must instruct. He must instruct. Because that's our primary ministry. To instruct them that oppose themselves. But adventure they might come to repentance. And recover themselves from the snares of the devil. Who are taken, listen, at, by him at his will. Some people they are under the will of the devil. The devil can wake up and say, now you. Let me kill you and they die. Some people are under the grace of the devil. No, you read the scripture. That they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Can you imagine the devil waking up and he says, let me give you a headache. And there is nothing in the world you can do. And the headache comes on you. And then you become sick. Oh, oh, oh. Headache, headache. Path. The person dies in a couple of minutes. Some of you, you walk your life in a timid experience. You're scared of everything. You understand? You walk out of your home and then that stepmother of yours does like this. Then she says, Apostle, did you see what she did to me? I cancel. I cancel. I cancel. Be free. If she does this to you, you're so do. <laughs> Greater is he which is in me than he that is in the world. You know, eh? and I'm not saying deliverance doesn't have its place. It has its place for babes. Yes, it has its place. Some people are still at a level of deliverance. But you get to a point where you outlive it and start to deliver others. Are you ready to walk in that life? So shall it be in the name of Jesus. But some of you, you're ministering questions. Everything on your life, it just doesn't show Christianity anymore. You have believed. Man, there are, man. When I was growing up, I met some ladies. They used to be in their 50s, 60s. And they said, my son, I'm fasting for, 50, for, for your 40 days. Then you ask her why? For my children. You're fasting 40 days for your children. Why? I, there is a woman who is doing witchcraft. A certain man of God told me. <laughs> they can bewitch your children. When you are a woman of God. Then you don't know what is inside you. You have to burn so bright. But even when the devil is in hell talking, they say, ah, they don't touch that woman's children. The day he touches your daughter, even for 15 minutes only, you give him a whooping, he will never forget. He said, and your children shall I teach, and their peace shall be many. 
Shalom. My children will have peace. You have to tell yourself every other day. My children shall have peace. Somebody say it. If you believe you're a parent, or shall be a parent, say my children shall have peace. They shall have peace. Because the blessing of God is for thousands of generations. There is no way I can serve God. You remember those pastors that man is serving God but his children are failing? That shall not be known of you. One man of God joked and said, all the demons the pastors chase out of their congregation, they enter their children. And I told them, not me. You're talking of another man of God. You're not talking about me. They are conscious. And whatever you're conscious about, you invite. Whatever you think and imagine, you ignite. I don't think that the devil can touch my children. I don't think it. Even if, even if, even imagining it, even if you just tell me, imagine it, it can just pass. Because I know who is inside me. Somebody shout hallelujah! So men are, are, are following genes. Blood is speaking. Oh, you have heart disease. In your family, how many people have heart disease? My father, my grandfather. Ah, so it's probable that even you, you'll have a new... Mama. No way. How many people are here? You, you beat, beat, that's blood revelation. Some of you go to doctors and they, they start asking you, uh, do you have cases of diabetes? They say, yeah, we have diabetes. Okay. Uh, you have cases in your family of asthma? Yeah. Uh, you have cases of sickle cells? Yeah. Then you hear, a young man is not going to marry his woman but because she's a sickle cell carrier. And pastors are accepting that nonsense. The Bible says we are members of his body. His bones. And his what? Yeah. Flesh. We are members of his flesh. We are members of his body. We are members of his flesh. We are members of his bones. When a man becomes born again, he becomes a new creature. Don't bring me nonsense of sickle cells. Now here this man of God is not wise. No, no. You're the one who is conforming to the standards of this world. Did they check Rebecca for sickle cells? Did Mother Sarah have sickle cell tests? Where do you get that nonsense from? Even if you married a man who is a sickle cell carrier, your children will not be sickle cell carriers. Why? Because you inherited the life which is of God. Ask Prosy Naruse. She's here. She'll tell you. She was a sickle cell carrier years ago. Prosy used to fall sick every three weeks. You know that point where they say this one might not leave. And I remember she was at campus. I used to go to my career to preach the gospel. And they used to call me every time this girl used to have crisis of sickle cells. Crisis of sickle cells. Her skin changed. Her eyes became yellow. You could look at the girl and know she was going to die. And then one time they called me at 3 a.m. in the morning and they told me she was too anemic to be alive. And I drove to hospital because I couldn't lose Prosy. She was an integral and is an integral part of this ministry. And the Lord had spoken to me that we are going to serve God. Together with the many people God has given us to serve God. So I remember going to that hospital and sitting on that bed. And I said, God, this is going to be the last time I'm stepping in hospital to pray for Naruze. We are speaking upon these cells to become a machete labor. Ask Prosy Naruze. That was the last time. It's probably what? Seven, eight years? I don't even remember. That was the last time we ever had a sick. Never. Her eyes became white. Her skin came back. And now she's as healthy as normal. You understand what I'm saying? Because of the life which is of God in the inside of our spirits. Tell somebody I can't die. I'm going to live until I'm done. In the name of Jesus. Somebody writes a will because the, the blood spoke. They found HIV in your blood. You start writing a will. Me, I think I'm gone. My children, look after your elder brother. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
There is a life that speaketh better things. Hey! That is blood revelation. Those people in their family, this happens. That is blood revelation. Oh, those people in their family, they don't need... That is blood revelation. Oh, I'm likely to have twins. Why? Because my uncles have twins. Ah, uh-uh. We don't have twins because our uncles have twins. No. Go through the lineage of the patriarchs. Go through the lineage of the patriarchs. And show me the first... You show me the twin stories of Jacob. You'll see. Before that, there was no testimony, but somehow. The man of the spirit just said, Rika patalamande zoba, yeah. And below and behold. You don't need to have a generation of, okay, they're talking about relatives. You can quote, okay, Jacob. Isaac. Hey. Do you understand what I'm saying? Tell somebody I have another lineage. Tell somebody again and tell him I have another lineage. Flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. Some of you they are checking your blood to do this. Everything that, that the blood speaks. Because blood speaks. You see what I'm saying? That's why it has a revelation. But so does the righteousness of faith. It speaks too. It speaks of a certain life. Hallelujah. And that is the course that I've chosen for my life and my children. And my great-grandchildren. What kills our fathers should not kill us and should not kill our children. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because we've believed the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If in your family they used to produce only poor people, go and the soccer. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're going to be the first one who has money. If in your family they were producing weak brains, you're going to be the wisest. If in your family they were producing failures, you're going to be the success. You're going to break the jinx. You're going to become the parent. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you received life. That is why we preach grace. He says, be not carried about by diverse and strange doctrines. Wherein there is no one profit. For it is a good thing the Bible says that the heart be established in grace and not in meats wherein they profiteth not to them which have been occupied therein. Do you know people are occupied in things that don't profit? They are listening to a gospel that doesn't help. They are listening to sermons that don't deliver. They are listening to things that can't help them but they have stuck on. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus. When you became born again, your identity changed. I'm not supposed to appeal to you to accept it. No. I'm supposed to urge you to get over it. If it disturbs you. First Peter one twenty three. I don't know if anybody has ever read that scripture in the Amplified Bible. One, two, three, let's go. Read that first statement so men only. You have been what? Say it again. Now, genes. You have been regenerated. You hear scientists saying, um, genes explain too much about a person. You know, when you look at your genes, we can tell where you're going, where you're coming from, what your family is, what, whatever is around you. You know, when we look at your genes, we, we can tell much about your genes. Mama. And then you also submit yourself to the genes of scientists. And then they start telling you, the, 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 you know, I was, I was seeing a little thing I was reading a couple of days ago, months I think. And there is, there is this doctor who can um, use DNA to, to tell the future diseases you can have. <laughs> eh, eh? And she's paid for that. I don't know what they call it. Scientists, if, you, if you're, you're an educated doctor, you, you might know what, what, that, what that is. But there is something about uh, DNA something, something, something. Where they get uh, say, take samples from you. 
through your genes, eh, they can tell which kind of disease you will have. Eh? Some of you, you, you go to doctors which check your blood type to, to know which kind of food you can... Mama. Which kind of food you can eat and which kind of food you can't eat. Blood group A doesn't eat this. Blood group O eats this. Blood group B eats this. Blood group flavor eats this. Then you're eating healthy. You're eating everything. You're trying to... You're bound. Our grandfathers didn't know blood group, but they were healthy. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. We have another kind of blood. Because we are members of his flesh, and flesh carries blood. Blood group this doesn't eat this. But blood group this eats this. And many of you are conscious about which blood group eats what you're trying to do. And then smile, this skin does this. Then this what does this. This group of this does this. You're going to all the kinds of health experts. You're trying, you will die. They just don't live by cosmetology. They just don't live by DNA. They just shall live. By faith, eat your meat and sleep. But some of you, that's why you invite it. Because, oh, don't give me too much meat. I'll get heart disease. Don't give me too much meat. I, I, it, will, it will trigger my diabetes. Oh, don't give me too much uh, sugar. Oh, I have, you know I'm diabetic. Don't give You will die. How, what is sugar made out of? Sugar cane. And that's the thing he created and said, it is good. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. So he says in Peter, that you have been regenerated. And if you're here, and you have histories of family histories of asthma, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart diseases, and all these kinds of things. Uh, goiters. I'm going to pray for some ladies. Your, your families have goiters and, and you're suspecting. You're starting to suspect. Because your mother had it, even you, you think you'll... Uh, it ends tonight. Some of you come from families where they have bad skin. Some of you come from families where they have bad hair. <laughs> Woo -wee. Tell somebody you've been regenerated. That is why some of you, because of this gospel, your children won't look like you. Doctors will even ask, but is this your child? Why? Because from the day your wife conceived, you started telling your child, Rabakata, Sanderi Robo Zibalaya, Reko Tile Bare, Sori Babareo, Sararande Reko, Sere Bariko Bostaye, Rande Rololi, Sarabasele Lebo. Somebody sound hallelujah! You don't need to go to the doctor. Oh, let's check. Is this my child? Is this my child? How come all of us are dark and you're dark and my child is... No, 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 no. You just know. We have been regenerated. And so whatever gene you determine to take in is the gene you'll produce. If you choose the gene of life, you'll produce life. If you choose the gene of health, you'll produce... That person in that family, they die very early. And then you, you allow it in your spirit that in our family, they die early. In our family, all of them die of stealing. Oh, in my family, all of them. And then you accept it. You know, for us in our family, we don't go past the age of 50. In our family, they don't live past 35. In my family, they don't live past 80. Mama, you're going to be the first.
That is why there is something, there is a prudent thing every Christian should do. Hi, one time just take a list and write everything negative about your generation before. You understand what I'm saying? And then on top put the title. Your name. Record breaker. Everything that happens, if in your family they don't get married, and then they propose, you tick. <laughs> if your family they don't live past 50, you become 51, you tick. Then in your old age, you tell your children, and you tell them, me, I am a... Set your record also. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even when I was beginning for Nero, I went through the history of the church in Uganda. And I wrote down some things and I said, I will never be these things. You, you don't write what they are. You just say, I can never be, then you write those things. I can never be, then you write those things. So that when you're ticking, it's here and amen. If you're even as crazy as I am, you might tick even before. <laughs> Tell somebody I'm going to break records in my family. I'm breaking records in my father's house. In the name of Jesus. I'm breaking records in Uganda. I'm breaking records in our clan. I'm breaking records in our tribe mates. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm breaking records in my classmates. I'm breaking records in my fellow married people. I, I, eh? Record breaker. Record breaker. Why? Because I've been re... The gene that could refuse me died. When Christ was crucified, the Bible says we died with him. We died with him. We died with him. And now we live unto him. For us in our family, nobody does this. Which family? <laughs> Which one? The one in Maokota. Or the one in the Bible. The one in the Bible, that's our testimony. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Even in the Bible, when I see a testimony which doesn't align with me, I refuse it. Like I refused Isaac's eyes. <laughs> I said, ah, Isaac, I can go better. No, 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 no. He was dim and his eyes were not seeing. No. I said, Papa, that one. I'm sorry. They have crossed over. Moses, the Bible says that he was old and his sight was clear. And his natural face was not what? Abated. And I said, uh -huh, Katia, I'm sorry, Isaac. Let me first stick with Moses on this one. Because I can choose. Have been regenerated. Tell somebody I've been regenerated. Oh! I don't know that you feel it in your spirit. Now, the Bible says, you are regenerated. You're born again. Not from a mortal origin. Hey! You're not of a mortal origin. He says, O oh seed, O oh sperm. Forget the things of your grandfathers. Those things that used to fail you. You're born of another seed now. You're born of another seed now. You remember in John, he was talking about us. He says he's talking about them which were not born of the will of man. They were not born of flesh, nor blood. Because he knew those two cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He says, which were born, not, give me the, the message of that. The message, the Bible says that these are God begotten. He says these are God begotten, not 
blood begotten, no flesh begotten, no devo- they are not. They are what? God begotten. Somebody tell somebody I am begotten of God. Turn to the other neighbor also and tell them I am begotten of God. My family lineage in the flesh does not touch me. The blood lineage in the flesh cannot affect me. The genealogy of failed generations of grandfathers and aunties and uncles. That one, I'm a new creation. For behold, the old is past and now the new. And all things are of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. So he says that you are not born of mortal origin or seed of sperm, but from one, listen, that is immortal by the ever living and lasting word of God. And the next verse says, for all flesh, somebody say all flesh, is like grass. You know, when, when Peter was speaking about begotten, he was taken in the spirit. He says, for for all flesh, mankind is like grass. And all its glory and honor like the flower of the grass. And he says, and the grass withers and the flower drops off. And the Bible says, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And he says, this word which begot you is good news. And it is the good news which we what? Preach to you. That means that you're begotten of what we preach to you. That means everything we preach to you defines why you're begotten of. Whoa! Did you get what I just said? Let me tell you what happened with Peter. When Peter was thinking about flesh and blood, the revelation, flesh and blood, blood is a revelation. Like I've told you, family lineage. Flesh is a revelation. Do you know even when you wake up and feel headache, it's a revelation. It is revealed to you that you have headache. <laughs> and then you attend to it. I, I, uh, I have. No. Your body is feeling headache. Not you. You, when you say I, you have owned it. But that man begotten of God cannot have headache. But some of you, when your body gets a headache, you say, I have. I have. You possess it. The doctor said that I have cancer. No. You can say the doctor said that the body has. But you can't say I. When you, when you shift that into your realm. Oh. So Peter is walking in the spirit. And then he observes the life which is not born by mortal sperm. And then he's driven to Isaiah verses 40 and 7. This is why he quotes it. Although he didn't quote it fully like it ought to be quoted. In Isaiah 40 and verse 6, 7, sorry. He says, 6, okay. He says, the voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? He said, all flesh is grass. The same thing Peter said. And all goodliness there over the flower of the field. And Isaiah says something I need us to know. He says, the grass withereth flesh, right? And the flower fadeth its glory. Because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. The Spirit of the Lord does what? Bloweth upon it. When you receive Jesus and you receive the Holy Spirit, you stop living in the flesh. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you kill the testimony of blood because you inherited the kingdom, the realm of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. So this new creature, and, and, and here is the, uh, something deep. Here is something deep. It's something I, I, I mentioned earlier. He said, corruption cannot what? Inherit what? I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. He said, corruption cannot what? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That means he meant when he said flesh and blood, that means flesh and blood is corruptible. And he says, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. When you became born again, you became incorruptible. Corruption can't inherit you. You became pure. You can't be made impure. That's why the word by which you're begotten 
it is incorruptible. Even Peter says, you'll be gone of the incorruptible word. And incorruptible. He says, incorruption cannot be what? Corruption cannot inherit what? That's why he says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. You can't begin in an incorruptible and be corrupted by disease. You can't be corrupted by poverty. You can't be corrupted by failure. You can't be corrupted by witchcraft. You can't be corrupted by all that nonsense men say. But you, if you want to and you yield to false teaching, hey, we shall bury you. And that's the nonsense many people listen to every Sunday. They are being told which generation of cars hit them, which generation of their grandfather is, is now holding them, and everybody's conscious. You see everything that has happened in your father's life and your mother's life is happening to you. Even if you see it, that's a familiar spirit. It is not truth. Observe it, your conscience will become weak, it will be defiled, and we shall bury you. Because you're building on the wrong rock. We are not building on what men think. You the son of man is. We are building on who you are. Somebody say I'm a child of God. Say I'm a child of God. I want you to raise your hands and speak to God. Come on. Speak to every situation in your life and tell it no more. No more. I know the truth. And the truth makes me. It doesn't set me. I'm already set free. Uh, it makes me free. Refuse. Refuse. If you're here and you're a barren woman, I want to speak upon you that before this year ends, you're going to conceive child. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you're here and you've been dealing with a generational disease, you're suffering from something, your father suffered, your mother suffered, your grandfather suffered, your auntie suffered. Tonight I want to speak upon your life and say that you're not going to inherit those things because you are regenerated. There is power right now that is walking through your bones and your life to separate you from any ungodly thing, to separate you from the dictates of flesh and blood men will not know you as the son of man you are. Men will know you as the son of God you are. The Bible says on this rock he will build the church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Disease shall not prevail. Sickness shall not prevail. Poverty shall not prevail. In the name of Jesus, marriage failure will not prevail. Ignorance will not prevail. Come on, just take three minutes for you and your family. Come on. I want you to speak into your future now. Come on, somebody. If you're sick, if there's any sick people here right now, I want you, if you're near a sick person, I want you to lay hands on them right now. God is healing the sick. I rebuke and I bind and I destroy every spirit of infirmity and disease. I command that spirit to lose you right now. If somebody is crippled, get them out of that wheelchair. Tell them to throw away the clutch and do something they could not do. I refuse disease. I curse poverty. I curse ignorance. I curse bondage. I curse witchcraft from the root. I curse.
it is well with your families. It is well with your finances. It is well with your visions. It is well with your dreams. It is well with your marriage. It is well with your relationships. It is well with your ministry. It is well with your nation. It is well with your heritage. It is well with your story. Because greater is He which is in you than He that is in the world. I want you to give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Come on, Kako Jesus. Clap like something is happening in your life in a few days from now. Start ticking your boxes. Mention it and tick it. Mention it and tick it. Mention it and tick it. Wisdom. Success. Multiplication. Tick. Tick. Marriage. Tick. Children. Tick. In the name of Jesus. people right now. Like this is the last time in the name of Jesus. It calls and lives in Jesus name. In Jesus name. I feel that people have been struck. You know, there are people even when you look at their face, they've been afflicted by the devil for so long. But tonight, tonight, those things of Sumanyade that have been following you, tonight, you're living it here. You're living it here. You're living it here. You're living it here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I feel God healing people. Kidneys. I feel God healing people. Liver diseases. Organs. Heart. Deliverance is taking place. You will not die. You will not die. You will not die. Listen. Listen. There are people who get spiritual spouses. Samanya spiritual husbands. Spirit, those things are not you. God separates you from that thing. Right now in the name of Jesus. If you have somebody in hospital. God is delivering people in hospital from here. Send power now. Send power now. Send power now. We rebuke that spirit of infirmity and disease. We speak in it. Some of you this week, you're going to testify. You're going to testify that your own have been delivered. Those of you who have been dealing with witchcraft, some people who spoke on your life, aunties and uncles who spoke, Mama, right now, by reason of the anointing, I judge it. I judge it. I judge it. They say you'll never get married. They say you'll never have children. You'll never have peace. Some people speak things over other people's children. Some of you, your children, as my goodness, let me even judge that too. There are people here, your children are struggling with things people spoke of their lives. Right now, in the name of Jesus. We judge it from the roots. The gates of hell will not prevail on your child. There are people who have diseases that have refused to heal. You have an incurable disease. That is witchcraft. Right now I feel a deliverance for people who have things that have refused to leave. Power of the Holy Ghost! If you've been having funny, abnormal headaches, I want you to put your hand on your head right now. Abnormal headaches. Eh? I want you to put your hand on your head right now in the name of Jesus. Abnormal, like your, your headaches are constant. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke that spirit of infirmity and disease. I speak healing from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I want to rebuke that demon that has been afflicting your mind and your head. People are getting delivered right now. Loose. 
devil, I command you to lose. I command you to lose. I command you to lose. Every form of witchcraft. Some of you, it's demons that had sat on your head. God is delivering you right now. Loose! 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 Some of you, it's just demons that had sat on your head. Loose! 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For who saw the Son sets free is free in me. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. If you're here and you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I have news for you. You're not regenerated yet. Come and get regenerated right now. Come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior right now. Those of you who want to be born again, come right now. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Wow. 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 Regeneration is going to take place in a couple of seconds. <laughs> God is good. Says God. Regeneration is taking place. Wow. Wow. Regeneration. Regeneration. I want you to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe that you died and rose again. That you're the true Son of God who gave his life for me. Tonight, I am born again. I'm regenerated. New DNA. New genes. New life. In Jesus' name. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.